innovation matters today because innovation has always mattered. Um, if you think, just, I mean, look out there at this magnificent setting we're in, and in such a short period of time, just reflect on the nation that we've been able to build. Um, it didn't happen by accident, and it didn't happen purely by hard work, although there was a fair bit of that that was involved. Um, this is about business facing up to the challenge that we face as a nation. There is not a CEO in the BCA who doesn't think about disruption and who doesn't think about innovation today. One of our objectives was really to articulate a vision for, for corporate Australia. To say, you know, what is it that we as, as corporate Australia can do right now in collaboration with other partners, but not in reliance on other partners to start to drive, to start to see some momentum uh, in building this innovation ecosystem. Uh, and what we discovered really was that there were four areas uh, where Australia uh, sh was showing some really important deficiencies um, and areas that we felt we, we could pivot uh, and use as levers, we could, we could turn those into strengths. They were really in four categories, so around competencies, and this is very much about the skills for the future. So, so do, do Australians, be, do they get trained on the things that will matter um, come you know, 2030. In Australia, the demand is outstripping the supply already. And we know that there are countries like India and Israel and China who are rushing the space. So this is the world is smaller. We're competing in a global landscape. Our talent and, and our people will uh, need to be competitive in that scenario. And this experiment we want to run is called 1-800-MY-FUTURE. And the problem that it solves, as I mentioned, is these individuals who um, may be facing some changes in their roles. Um, what we want to do is actually create a hotline, if you will, where they can call a phone number and they can get some very practical advice. What is some real advice that helps me understand what skills and capabilities I have today that might be transferable? What can I top up? And what opportunities are available for me to actually make that journey and that and that path through training through real jobs at the end that we all know are actually in demand in the economy and we think that the way to activate that is to start to run a campaign of real stories people who have made those transitions so if you think about tv campaign talkback radio um, rsl posters where you see people who might have been a florist and now they're a web designer. They might have been a printer, but now they're a UX designer. They might have been a truck driver, but now they're remote operating trucks, for example. See yourself in it. Start to be inspired, start to be empowered. Call 1-800-MY-FUTURE. Uh, secondly, we saw that there was a, uh, a poor track record in terms of commercialization uh, of some of our wonderful inventions. You know, we, we actually don't have a shortage of, of, of good ideas, uh, but we do seem to have a limited ability to take them to global markets and really scale and, and we have a lot of businesses that get to four person businesses but not a lot of businesses that get to 400 person businesses and so we really wanted to look at that and say why why is that the case and how do we change that now we're shifting across to i guess the commercial focus um the first uh, idea that i'll talk to uh, is really around this concept of an innova innovation index and playbook two mutually reinforcing uh, components that are really looking at um, encouraging innovation and fostering innovation at the heart of corporate Australia. Um, what we're trying to do with the Innovation Index is, is um, to, to make it easier for our, our CEO, board, executive, our investor and analyst community to get on the same page in terms of the value of innovation. Innovation mapping, the best way that I think we've, we've talked about describing this, and you can see this little picture up here, it's imagining Australia at night with the lights turned on. So using a data-driven data approach to really understanding our ecosystem, um, to understand where innovation is occurring right across Australia, what relationships and connections are driving most value, economic value, to understand where economic complexity exists and how we can tap into that to differentiate as a, as a country. Third, I guess, if innovation mapping is about data and a data is important, alchemy is a bit about the chemistry around the, the connectivities, the, 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 the balance of getting the, the human-centered interactions and the digital interactions and bringing them both together. We also then just looked at collaboration. What, what we found is that uh, organizations that work, say, with CSRO or work with universities 
are three to four times more likely to, to report productivity increases year on year. The first one that we'll open with is the CoLab, or GoLab as it was renamed yesterday by uh, a couple of people. So, uh, but anything that you brand this with, the idea behind this is to really build a bureau of accessible and almost deployable expertise around collaboration. So this is making sure that we actually do solve some problems rather than just an accelerator or an incubator that takes one person or one corporate idea forward and tries to find a solution. This was really building the right team to solve a challenge that was placed in front of the CoLab. Now the in event is a practical event that actually is set up to solve one of these challenges. So this is when we actually have the, the application of the talent in a real world scenario looking around the room at each other, solving a challenge. And the reason the importance of the in event is there is because this is actually where the neural networks of collaboration are formed. This is where we build the capability. We actually try to do things and we actually have the experimentation live. It's not a hackathon, it's not a conference. It's a combination of both that's really convened to ensure that we apply the collaborative expertise that we have currently in silos or hidden under the nooks and crannies and really allow it to shine. One of the really clear things that we have in, in our collaboration challenge is the fact that Aussies don't often ask for help. We very rarely reach out and say, please help me, I have a challenge that I can't solve. Our stoic nature often puts us in the condition that we have to go and solve this ourselves because that's my right to passage. And Aussie glue is an attempt to overcome. And then the last area was just around culture. Uh, as we started to talk amongst ourselves, we, we just came across these phenomenal examples of incredibly innovative Australian businesses that have kicked goals internationally and they are quite literally the best businesses no one's ever heard of. You've heard about the competencies, you've heard about commercialisation, collaboration. I'm going to cover the culture piece. But I think it's more than culture, it's about celebration. And we, we have celebration there in, the, in our little chart. It's also about confidence. So really, the, the initial idea started around this My Innovation channel. But just like, you know, our kitchen rules and MasterChef demystified cooking, made it more accessible, we were thinking this could be the idea to sort of help demystify what innovation looks like and, and make it more available. So as we're thinking through this idea, we had a little bit of a diversion. And we said, well, look, let's, we need some role models. We want to be able to show some examples of some inspirational, just like we have our great chefs and our great, you know, home decorators. We need some great innovators, some heroes that we have out there. And we need to celebrate it and we need to show them as role models. So the idea behind this is building a bit of a hall of fame of that contribution. And that's really the, the heart of un unsung heroes or poppies to the top. It's really celebrating these folks, creating this hall of fame. But the end result, there's a bit of a science to it as well. And there's an end result. The end result is it's jobs, it's prosperity, it's future. It's helping make a better Australia. None of these might actually work. And you know what? If that's the case, we should absolutely celebrate that. Because the concept that we wanted to to, that we wanted to realise was that we should be getting together and thinking about these challenges, coming up with some ideas, put, building prototypes and getting out and seeing what sticks. Because I can guarantee you if none of, ten, none of these ten do, they will lead to something that does and that will lead to something even bigger that does. The fact that we've got people together telling stories about how they're tackling these challenges in their businesses will mean that those good stories start to spread. And collectively, the tide will rise and the boats will rise with it.